Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains and welcome to this special layout design video where we're going to look at a very cool and special layout and track plan. We're going to look at this 12 by 12 feet in scale layout, switching layout set in dense urban area. So just to get a whole of the layout, we're going to look at it uh, section by section first, discuss the, the, the track plan, how you would operate it to look at some scene elements. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the layout schematic and how you can actually operate this layout. The areas we're going to be looking at are the yard right here down below. We're going to be looking here at this urban street running city edge type inspired layout. We're going to look here at this channel section. Now I'm going to go down here and we're going to continue with this separate railroad that you can reach through an interchange track. We're we'll going to look at this elevated line way up here that goes around the layout. And there's staging as well. We're going to see how that fits into the track plan and what you can do with that. One thing to note, if I get my pen, the layout is meant to be viewed here from the outside at the bottom. Obviously from the inside and partially here from the staging. You can access all around the layout for construction or maintenance, but it's meant to be viewed by these areas. Let's start with the yard and I'm going to rotate the view so you look at it as you would look at it when operating the layout. So here is the yard and it's very basic. Here is one track coming in from the staging and here's another track going to staging again. Now this track right here goes to the switching area and this one right here is just a yard lead, doesn't lead anywhere. And let's just look at the track itself. So we have a uh, line here, the first one, it just goes straight through, doesn't enter the yard. Second one is an arrival departure track. And then we have well, one, two, three, four tracks that are basically classification uh, and yard tracks. They're basically a yard tracks, classification tracks. This one, the third one is also a through yard track. So you could use that as an extra arrival departure track uh, or dub it as that if it's busy. So we have one track here bypassing the yard ladder for the engine facility. So we have a steam facility here and we have a diesel facility. I'm happy the client did not want a turntable because you can fit a turntable in here and then have the turntable roundhouse, something like that, but it's really squashed and then you won't have enough space here to put in a nice cooling facility and, and the, the ash pits and stuff like that. Now this track right here goes through the interchange on the other side of this hill and we'll discuss that in a bit. So this is what we looked at. Here is the yard and the engine facility. Now onto a little break and this is the city edge layout built by Vic Smith and I think his brother Rex as well. So have a look at the channel, have a look at the video because we took a lot of inspiration from this city edge layout uh, and that's something we really want to try to replicate but then in end scale and with some different features. So if you look at the layout just from the top, you see that every little bit and inch is <laughs> spoken for, let's say. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute as well, but there's uh, sidewalks and streets, and streets and, and parking areas, everything, everywhere, uh, all at once. One thing I want to show as well is the layeredness and what we're going for. So we have the foreground, then we have medium size buildings, two, three stories after that. And then we have the elevated track and then behind that are even taller buildings. In the foreground, in this case, we have a parking lot with a little uh, meter house for the meter guy to sit. And here you see that as well, going from low in the foreground to medium to high in the background. So I don't want to talk about his layout. Have a look later at his... Uh, the city edge layout is a fantastic layout. So now let's have a look at that section on our layout. Here it is. Let me zoom in a bit. So and the main feature is the track and the road scene in the middle and basically the city scene as, as a whole. Let's just go through the track and then we'll look at some scenic elements. So we come in here on the bottom left and we can actually go all the way through this scene and go back, go to the channel section over there. So that would be, let's say, the main line. And then we have a lot of switching coming from there. So as an element, we have the runaround right here. So do note that, that's important. Because you're gonna need that. Let me see, raise some lines here. Then going back to the bottom, we have one industry track there, industry track there, industry track there. Coming for the yard, those are all trailing. We have another one right there. We have another one right there. This is a piece of track that just veers off the layout. 
uh, just to, to give the illusion that the world is bigger than our layout. It's the same with this track right here, it just goes into nowhere. You could use this as storage or perhaps as an interchange if you would like to do so, but it doesn't really have any purpose. We have more industries, one, two, three, right there along that track. We have some industries right here at the edge of this uh, switchback, you could say. And then we have a very large underground uh, warehouse right here with three tracks, which is great because it's going to generate a lot of traffic. And this track right here on the left actually leads into a tunnel, goes around, comes out here at the bottom, and then goes to that brewery that we saw but we didn't discuss at the yard. We'll come back to that later. Just finishing the track here, we have one track diving into a tunnel and coming out here on the north. And as you see, it has a return loop. So you can make it out and back from the yard. You just want to send the train out and go through the scenery and come back. Or if you want to turn the train around, this is a handy feature to have as well. Now going through the scenery, you see there's a lot of tunnels. If I just count them, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, basically seven tunnels. And that's something the client really liked. He liked these tunnels in an urban environment. So we basically have here a um, retaining wall and there's a lot of retaining walls everywhere nowhere here is another one and back here behind the elevated track as well and it, it's really a balance between making these tunnels useful and really giving a purpose and tying in the foreground with the background uh, versus a fantasy whimsical layout it just has you know we're just playing whack-a-mole where the train comes out the tunnel here dives there and goes underneath and all this stuff you shouldn't want that and it's not very realistic. It's a bit too whimsical for my taste. And I do like to make uh, realistic uh, layout designs. Now looking at the scenery, we have some really cool stuff here. So we have, the, this is all meant to be urban and more residential-ish. So we have some residential houses here. Um, these can be some residential buildings as well and in the background. And there's stuff to do for residences. So we have a gas station. Here we have a diner, which is great because it's in between all this track right here. So somehow the owner of the diner saw this plot of land and he thought I can make money off this plot of land because it is dead smack in the middle of all these busy roads and all this track. So it's a, it's a good place to be as a diner. So the diner is here in between all the track. It's a nice scene and building everything up. The buildings are color coded. So the lighter peach is a low building. And then we go to medium peach and darker peach and the same with the blue. We have light blue medium blue and then the darker blue is a very tall building and that's how you want to build it up and the layers that we saw from the city edge video we're trying to do the same here so we have a low a team track area here the gas station is relatively low the more sandy area with the structure right here we have a used car parking lot that's low and then we slowly go into the medium buildings here structures here medium this is a parking lot then some structures more medium structures, medium structures. These are all medium, and then we go high. So we have a big coal trestle there with a power plant. We obviously have the elevated track right here. And then later we'll discuss in the back of even taller buildings. So when you go through the scene, let's clean that mess up. So when you go through the scene, you really get drawn in uh, by the different uh, elevations that are there. We also want the scene to breathe a little bit where possible. So that's why we have this greenish area here with the gardens. Try to open it up a little bit where we can. And this area right here actually is quite flat as well. If you see, there's a lot happening, but it's all track, roads, and a small diner. So it's a bit of a low area in between the buildings here on the bottom and the buildings up here in the top. So I could talk about this for hours, but I'm not going to because we're going to go to the next section. This was the city section. And then if we go to the port section, and what you see is this red line and there's a hinge right here because this entire area is a swing gate that swings out in that direction. So to make that possible um, from the hinge here, you need to keep a straight radius, maybe a little bit smaller towards uh, that side so it can swing out like that. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's just what you're seeing right there. Let's zoom in <coughs> and rotate a bit. Now this section is meant to be a little bit of a standalone area. It's a bit more classical uh, track plan. So we have coming in here from the south, you can go through this section, through this tunnel, and then you would head off if you would want to, to the yard, but that's more for continuous running than anything else. But I mentioned a classical uh, setup. So we have a 
uh, runaround right here. And this is the lead to the runaround, just crosses the channel right there. It's set up as a, a larger body of water here, where there's actually still some relevant keyside port operations. And the channel here off to the right is it runs a dead, dead end. So we have a facing spur here we come in, facing here, and a facing industry here with the grain elevators. Um, and this is for transloading ships to grain. And then we have two trading spurs here for a uh, scrapyard. Now this area is meant to be a bit more grimy, so on this lower level, there's nothing residential or anything like that. It's just industries, it's quayside, and a bit of griminess from the scrapyard. Connecting the two decks with each other, we do have this bridge coming up and over, which I think is a great element. And we have a road going in a tunnel there as well. So that was that section. Yeah, I mean, this. I said this is a bit of a standalone area, um, which is great because then when you come from the yard, you can really wiggle your way through here and then go here and then do some operations. But we actually have a separate standalone area down here as well. This is the only area that you can see from the outside of the layout. So this is great to maybe finish first or to, for visitors, or if you don't want to start at the whole layout, you just want to operate a bit, you can do it in this area. So let's have a look. We're coming from the yard here, and this is a interchange track. So the cars would be spotted here on this track. And to make it a little bit fun, we have coming in one trailing spur right here, and the rest is all facing. So if you want to set a car here on the trailing spur, you need to go to this runaround that's conveniently located all the way at the other end of this section. So you have to do a little run and then run back to spot this car right there. And the other one, two, three industries are all facing. So this should be a bit easier. So like I said, this is just a little section. It's near to the, the more busy area. Here is the end of the channel. It's a big industry on this side of the channel and the other side of the channel. And it's, you see there's more space. Scenery-wise, it's a bit more open. We have more grass. Nothing really much happening. Uh, it, it, they've got a lot of you know, apartment buildings here just to block the view a bit of the train that's going up there. And it's meant to be a separate area with a little bit different scenery feel. So that was that. Now we go up, up and above. And what do we have up, up and above? We have the upper deck, which is for a different type of train, actually. This is, this is for either long freight trains to do just loops and just to enjoy the scenery, or for smaller light rail to, to also stop at the passenger station. So let's just follow it. We have the yard right here when we come in. And this is all elevated either with an embankment or on a bridge. Totally separate from the rest of the layout so far. And we have a passenger station right here. And we just continue our journey up here into the city, the busy city area, where we can follow the inline inner track right here, or the outer track diving through and behind the scenery, going back to the yard here. In a minute, I'll show you how it's all connected. So let's zoom in a little bit to this section, see what's happening. We come in here on the inner loop on this side, and we go out through here on this side. And then basically we have a passing siding right here. And we have that because we have some industries. We have two tracks here for a warehouse at this building. And we have a coal trestle right here, spilling and dumping coal um, into the chutes for this power plant right there. So you don't want to have this little passing siding here so you can safely just spot some cars here and take your time while the other trains keep on looping around. So this all connects to the staging area, so let's have a quick look at that. Let's rotate it, and let's take this block of scenery off. We'll talk a bit about that in a minute. And we see we basically have two sections of staging. We have one right here and one right here, divided by these two yard ladders. Now, in a European design, what you would do is you would probably um, have the tracks run in a manner like this, and then use double slip turnouts everywhere here and here to give you even more flexibility. I think reliability is also a name of the game, so I just think it's better to use these normal turnouts and maybe sacrifice a little bit on track length, but just have a little bit more reliable operations. And now you can hold a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four trains on each, keeping one track empty, and I'll side this one, so you can go through the entire yard like that. You could opt to have uh, one of these tracks just fully extended and one on the top to have two very long trains 
possibly as well. But it doesn't mean when you come in here, go for the bottom track, you do need to make a crossover somewhere on the other side for the bottom track to the top track. That's all manageable. So we'll go back to the scenery in a bit. So if you're looking at this design and you're thinking, wow, I want something like this, or I have a design, but it's just not flowing as well as I'm uh, showcasing it here, then look at dubaitrains.com. Have a look there and you'll see all the different layout design services that I provide. You can also get your hands on this exact layout plan in any real file so you can mess around yourself on the aforementioned website or on my Patreon page. They both link to the same. So let's continue and let's just get out of all the scenery for a minute. Let's look at the schematic and how are we going to operate everything. So if we start very easy on the bottom level, this is a schematic and we have different destinations let's say we have the yard we have the second railroad b let's call it with the interchange track then we have this entire city urban street running city section i call it uptown and then we have the channel district we can call it something like that and then after that of course we have the upper loop and these two are connected you don't really see it it's not very obvious but there is a, a line let's call the yellow line running from the yard to the outer upper loop and a blue line also going back or up, depending on direction, uh, to the uh, outer upper loop to the yard. The staging is also in the outer loop, keeping it a little bit easy. So you can always have a train running on the inner loop, but the um, industry is in the inner loop, you see here. So you do need to cross over some tracks at some point, which is all great fun. So how will you actually come about to operate this layout? What is, what is the goal of the layout? That's maybe a good sentence. What is the goal? <laughs> What's the goal of the layout? What are we doing? So let's just simplify it a little bit more. So we have staging, other railroad, yard, staging, uptown, channel. Boom, just that. These are different uh, districts, different areas, different destinations. So you want to have a train that goes to or from a destination for purpose. So let's say we have the East Connect train. It goes east, so it starts in the west end of the staging goes east, goes to the yard, switches some cars, brings, let's say, new cars to the layout, and takes old, take old cars from the yard, and then brings them back to the staging. We have the same in the west, uh, but in the opposite direction, just refreshing the cars, taking the old ones, bringing the new ones to the yard. And then we would have the uptown local, is what I call it. And not the uh, uptown girls, something else. The uptown local, and it goes from the yard, take these new fresh cars and brings them uptown and switches all the uh, cars that need to be switched there. You can also have the channel turn, so it does the same, takes the cars from the yard, it goes to uptown, switches there, goes to the channel district, then turns around, heads back, goes uptown, takes more cars, and uh, possibly maybe spots some other cars that didn't do it on the way over, and then goes back to the yard to deposit Let's call it the old cars, which then the uh, East and West Connect would pick up again and bring to the staging. So that is the traffic flow. There's also the standalone Railroad B right here, the RRB turn. Um, that's just totally separate. It's not connected except for a uh, interchange track to the yard. That's something that the, the, the yard uh, master and the local yard switcher will do. It will spot the cars from the yard on the interchange track, so the RB turn can uh, switch that. So you see, it's very simple and straightforward. You just need to think in terms of destinations and purpose. Let's dive back to the layout because there's so much more to go through. We just went through the individual uh, items, but we haven't really looked at it as a whole, and we haven't discussed this big scenic element right there. Uh, I want to say something about these ITLA pieces we can use over there. And there's so much more to talk about. So let's just zoom in. And this is the only section of layout that you can see from both angles, both sides, from the inside and from the out. And I wanted to divide this bottom half uh, and the top half with this scenic element. And that obviously is this raised embankment here. And oh, of course, also the double track that as you see, just basically cuts through the entire layout and goes to the bottom here. So that's the purpose of that and to really create a divide between the two areas. So on the north side, to help with that, we have some, some bushes and some trees that can be quite tall. And on the south side, we have all this residential and other buildings here to try to block the view a little bit. 
Here on the right is a very cool scene where we have one, two, three, four, five elements going over the channel. I think that will be an element in itself that will draw the, the viewer into that area. And here on the left we have, I did make a little raised hill um, just and with some bushes and some structures to, to really try to, to block the view a bit and to say that this is the end of the scene and after it is staging. Here's the brewery that I forgot to mention early. it's earlier, it's right there. Uh, has three tracks laid out for it now and it goes into the tunnel and connects up north. And you'll see the yard as well. It's a bit more open. It's getting a bit more open to the right, just to have a different feel of layout. Cause you shouldn't make everything super dense because it's just too much. The layout needs to breathe a bit as well. Hence also the foresty look with the trees just to make it all breathe a little bit. So let's go to the left, go clockwise and rotate a little bit as well. And here we have a scene we haven't really talked about. The question is, what are you gonna do with the yard. You can fully hide it, that's option one. So you make a, basically a tunnel out of so many buildings and structures and trees and mountains, they just hide it all together. Uh, second option is you would leave it completely open and you can see it in its entirety. And the third option, what we did is a mix of the two. So we have some structures here, taller structures, um, just to, to block the view a little bit, but you can probably still see the yard uh, above it. Here we have some bushes, etc. We went through that in the taller industry. Uh, so you can still see it, it's still there, still adding to the sense of urbanism. Um, but the real showstopper is this section here in the middle. And you need to realize this is quite tall. So we have ground zero here. Then we go up one level for the uh, upper deck and the staging. And on top of that is this road scene. And on top of that is this elevated track section. So this is quite high and it's nice because this elevated track section, as I just drew and wiggled in with my pen all over the place, is meant to be something like this from ITLA. So if you look at their website, they sell these elevated, well, it's the official word, elevated structure kit, elevated track sections. They have a New York style, the Chicago style, great product and you can look underneath that so you can really create a nice scene with the street all kinds of cars and shops to the left and the right as you see here and you can see it here on the left as well where one side is open so you can actually see everything and that's what we're going to be doing this is so high up that you can look into it of this side so we can have shops on the left shops on the right and really make a great scene it's still a little bit open from this side as you see a little bit open here because you got the track open here oh. but that will be a great scene and a lot of detailing and a lot, you know, a lot of happening over there. It also creates a divide between everything you know, on the left, which is a more open feel with the yard and everything on the right, which is, let's call it hardcore urban layout. So a lot to say about that. There is one of the elevated tracks here that goes in a single line elevated, disappears into a tunnel. This is actually a fake piece of track, doesn't do anything, but it's a nice scenic element to have right there. And in this section, we have the creek just to give some nature and to, like I said before, to open this all up a little bit. And then we have a lot of tracks here with, with industries just for some cool switching. And it's a nice look to have these parallel tracks there, I believe. And yeah, on to the next section. In the next section, it's also, we, we, we discussed this entire lower area. So you really see now as we went through the areas, this is, you know, there's different segments, there's lower and there's the upper area, but you want to tie those two together a little bit. So how do we do that? Well, we do that with this, again, this ITLA uh, lifted railway track right here that, that separates the back from the front a little bit. We also have roads going to the back into tunnels. We have them here going on the bridges on the right. We have roads on the top as well. We have track here, like this coal trestle that comes forward as well. We have buildings that go from down below to up above uh, here as well. And we have also uh, abutments here, just holding the track back. That's just something you have by default when you build a layout up like this. So those are the various elements. We already went through the different heights. And so I think we've said everything on this section that we, we have to say. And if we go to the next area, I did my best with the swing gate to have it cut through 
almost straight sections of track. So to really minimize the amount of possible derailments, more track back there as well. Uh, only not really here, but it's small switching. So I don't think that well, you can always relay the track a little bit to make it a bit more straight. Um, here we have the elements, another, more tunnels, but also this road coming forward to really tie in the foreground with the background. This will also be a really nice scene with all these tracks just going underneath the road there. This bridge, we already discussed that. More trains going into tunnels. So the purpose here is also for the track to disappear because this is the track that goes, as you see here, to the yard. And you don't really run trains there during operations. So it, it just needs to be hidden uh, out of sight. It also gives the illusion again that the layout is bigger than, uh, than the world is bigger than the layout that we have here. But down below is all very industrial and grimy, but up here to make it a little bit more friendly, we have the residential area and we have the station. The track crossover right there. We need that to get the operations all done because this line goes down and then this is the outer loop and this is the inner loop. Now, if you want to see how the, the layout really works and how it's all puzzled together, then do have a look at my Patreon page. And there you can find everything and you can look at all the different layers and view all the information to, to either learn from it or change the layout to your needs. Yeah, and that was the layout design video for today, guys. Thank you guys all for watching. Have a look at my website. The link is on the screen right now where you'll find more information. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.